For those of you who don't know me, my name is Arthur Cardi, and I'm the Executive Director of the Waterloo Institute for Nanotechnology. And it's a real pleasure today for me to welcome Dr. Dominique Riviere of uh, the University of Bordeaux as our first WIND seminar speaker for 2012. Dr. Riviere received the Masters of Electronics and Electrotechnical Automation at the University of Bordeaux One. Uh, France, that's the University of Bordeaux, which is associated with science and technology. He did that in 1987, and then he graduated with a diploma uh, of in-depth studies in electronics and a PhD in electronics from 1988 to 1992. That was also at the University of Bordeaux. And he's been involved in research on chemical and biochemical sensors since 1989 in the IXL microelectronics laboratory, and subsequently since 2007 at IMS Bordeaux and the CNRS, which is the National Research uh, Council of uh, France at the University of Bordeaux. Uh, his uh, main interests are in surface acoustic wave sensors, particularly SOAR and love, love wave devices. Now, don't you like that? He is currently participating in several research projects in this field, uh, for example, gas detection at sub uh, part per million levels, immunosensors, thin film characterization, and so on. And he is a professor of electronics engineering at Bordeaux and head of the electrical engineering department. I might just uh, add before we start that the University of Waterloo and uh, l'Université de Bordeaux 1 signed a comprehensive agreement to cooperate in research and education in 2010. And Wynn and Bordeaux have been developing a very close and synergistic partnership in nanomaterials science and technology. So please uh, welcome Dr. Robier, whose seminar title is Integration of Hardware, Intelligence, and Knowledge in Communicating and Anthropocentric uh, in communicating and anthropocentered anthropocentered systems. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much, and good afternoon. Uh, it's a real, real pleasure for me to be here uh, uh, to present this uh, activity. At first, I just just uh, I, I start with a short uh, presentation of my lab, <coughs> IMS. So it's. Uh, lab uh, in, uh, in the University of, uh, of um, Bordeaux. So we have different uh, th thematic, different topics. So we've uh, exactly four, four departments. And uh, my activity is on uh, the microsystem group here. Okay. And I work in a team about uh, surface acoustic wave for uh, detection with using acoustic wave. So we have different uh, uh, topics, system and interaction, system integration, hardware integration, so, and from material to device is more uh, material and microsystem. We have different um, activity about platform and technology, platform of analysis and characterization is more for reliability, platform of lifetime science, and uh, another, it's about uh, the vehicle of future, so it's uh, for uh, more uh, integration of uh, automatic system in car uh, system. So uh, EMS in numbers, we are exactly uh, about uh, 400 members with about uh, more than 150 uh, PhD. Um, the number of publication per year is more than uh, 300. 10 patent per year, okay. And the annual budget of the lab, it's about uh, 18 mega euro, including uh, salary. So we have exactly um, 10,000 square meter of research area, including um, with a partner with uh, the industry. Especially we have three, uh, four exactly collaborative research lab with industry. Uh, STM, it's a... Uh, um, ST Microelectronic, it's a big uh, company in microelectronic in France. PSI, it's a French uh, uh, car uh, builder, um, Peugeot and Citroën. Thales, it's an aeronautic uh, company, and Total, okay, uh, petroleum uh, company. So we have uh, seven startups with uh, 50 employers, so the different name of this uh, startup was born. And uh, it's a view of the, of the lab. 
We have uh, now a new one. It's not yet finished, but uh, it's a, uh, we have a, a new uh, development in Bordeaux with uh, LabEx, especially with Amadeus. So we have a different opportunity to build a new, new programs, and especially with this equipment. So collaboration research labs with um, STMIC Electronic about uh, analog and uh, mixed RF, the technology modeling and characterization. With PSI, it's a global control of automotive uh, chassis and uh, dynamic identif identification of the drivers. With Total, it's uh, seismic uh, imaging. And with Thales, is uh, all of the embedded uh, system for aeronautics. So different group, um, material, microsystem. So in microsystem, for me, it's microsystem for uh, for acoustical detection with application about uh, biosensor, chemical detection uh, in several enver harsh environment, characterization of complex fluid, and characterization of micro and micro nano structure materials. Okay. So mm, nano electronics, device reliability, circuit design, diver and uh, automatic signal in match, production engineering. So different. Uh, uh, a large spectrum of <coughs> activity, uh, connectic and bio bioelectronic. So very, very large uh, activity with different, um, so it's a really a multi multidisciplinary approach. So now I would like to, to start my presentation about acoustic wave. So, um, I am the head of the, of the team. Uh, we are different colleagues. My colleague uh, Corinne Dejous is professor. Vincent Rambeau is just uh, chargé de recherche, so junior assistant, yeah. Amida Halil, uh, qui est assistant professor. Angelique Tetlin, assistant professor. And uh, Jean-Luc Lachaud is an engineer. So it's, uh, we are we are in uh, the, the, really the aim of the of the team is to design a sensor biochemical chemical sensor using acoustic waves so to introduce my talk so i start with an introduction after i speak about fundamental and of acoustic wave the different property of crystal <coughs> plane waves bulk acoustic wave guided waves and after i present the acoustic wave platform the sensor, the principle, the wave generation, the, cho the choice about uh, sensitive coating and different application. And uh, to, to demonstrate uh, different application, I propose to, to, to show you different examples like uh, gas detection, immunodetection, detection, and complex fluid characterization. So to introduce, uh, if you look about uh, micro sensor, especially in gas sensor for chemical application, there is a large spect of a um, spectrum of uh, devices like a micro cantilever, uh, the pellister, thermal conductivity, a semiconductor oxide, uh, L gas fed, uh, is fed, uh, optic system like uh, surface plasma resonance, uh, fiber, and uh, DNA bioship. And another one is acoustic wave. Acoustic wave, like uh, with two types of uh, acoustic wave the bulk, bulk acoustic wave and so surface acoustic waves. So if you look about the architecture of a smart uh, chemical sensor, you can see the, this uh, architecture. With, we have the different target molecule here. The transducer, okay, a system with uh, signal conditioning. After a system for pretreatment, of response, response treatment, <coughs> with it, it should be hard or soft uh, environment, and we can obtain in the this uh, view uh, the idea is to realize all of the system to realize a complete system and to have a, a portable system to really uh, detect uh, some uh, molecules, some target compound, uh, target. Uh, uh, target compound like uh, uh, chemical or biochemical compound. So the chemical and biological field are very large. Uh, we have chemical industry, food industry, especially in Bordeaux, we are very uh, 
uh, we like wine. <laughs> so biological and medical field, environmental application, uh, chemistry, and uh, another point very important now, it's uh, military and security, okay? So for us, the idea is to realize acoustic sensor. So first, few, few words uh, about uh, historical uh, background of the acoustic wave. So we start with uh, Lord Raleigh, with uh, surface acoustic, uh, surface elastic wave. After a uh, big uh, opportunity uh, with uh, uh, the, um, the idea of generation with uh, interdigital transducer, so we we can obtain, so we know we we can obtain, for example, the the concept of the surface uh, surface uh, acoustic delay line. So it's a very uh, popular uh, device used in telecommunication. For, um, for treatment of the information. Um, up, um, we have uh, the possibility to develop different uh, devices for acousto-optical or acousto-electronic component. And uh, uh, the, um, the purpose of my talk is to, to demonstrate the, the high potentiality of this uh, acoustic device to, to realize, to design sensor system. So, Generally, um, elastic wave propagate in a material medium like uh, fluid, gas, liquid, but generally we have a multi-layer structure. So we focus on propagation in solid because it's very important for us to, do, to have a, to demonstrate, to, 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 to be able to realize uh, a platform. Uh, so for us, if you start, uh, the problem is to, 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 to uh, realize uh, uh, we have different uh, mechanical components like a strain, a stress. There are different relations between these two uh, stress and strain. Um, we have here, here it's a, a view of the different displacement uh, of the stress and the strain. We have uh, an elastic solid, so we have a low, the low, of, it's a, a hook low, who permit to, to have a connection between the stress and the strain, and this permit to have uh, a good um, overview of the mechanical uh, behavior of the, of, the, of the material. And so, normally, if you want to generate um, acoustic, it's necessary to use a piezoelectric material, like a quartz, so we use uh, this material uh, quartz because it's very um, popular, very well known, and so it's easy to, to use in a microelectronic process. And uh, for us now, if you want to, to, um, to understand the, the, the problem of propagation of acoustic wave on the, on the solid, we have to define exactly the strain and the dip electrical displacement with different relations. So it's a matrix, uh, matrix uh, approach, it's tensor uh, system. So it's uh, complicated, it depends on the crystallographic orientation of, the, of your material, especially of the quartz, of the piezoelectric quartz. So we have different relations between mechanical, thermal, and electrical. So it's, uh, we have for all of the relation between stress and field and electric field, field and temperature, we have different relation. The connection can be uh, obtained using different uh, uh, tensor. So it's um, sometimes difficult because make a, the, the resolution, the solvation of the, of the problem uh, is mm, most of the time by a numeric, numerical uh, approach. And uh, if you look, if you, if you want to have a, uh, an overview of the mechanical uh, behavior of your system, you have to, to define exactly the strain and the displacement. And we have here the different uh, um, value of the Stevenef matrix, the piezoelectric matrix, and the dielectric matrix. And with this value, we have a complete overview of the mechanical and electrical parameter of the material. So now if you look about the propagation uh, of the uh, prog propagation equation of the, of the waves, we have the equation of motion described by this 
expression about the electrical is defined by the Poisson equation. And if you want now to describe all of them, you can obtain this system. So now we have different types of acoustic waves. The first is about a bulk acoustic wave, uh, bow. Okay, we have two types of uh, uh, polarization, quasi-longitudinal waves and quasi-shear waves. So we have here a view of the polarization, of the deplacement of the particle. And uh, for us, it's not very interesting to use this type of bulk acoustic wave because the idea to, to, to realize uh, an acoustic uh, sensor is to, to have a high sensitivity, to have, to have a very high sensitivity to detect especially uh, uh, um, a specific compound. So bulk acoustic wave, I'll show you in a few minutes, is not a, really a good uh, candidate for a realized platform. Guided acoustic wave is the other uh, acoustic wave. So we have at first a semi-infinite medium, like uh, for surface, uh, surface waves, like Rayleigh or brechstein gulayev waves, two type of SO, SO and SH SO. After we have fin flate, two parallel free surface, so lamb, view, lamb wave, so FPW, and uh, shear horizontal wave, SH APM. And if you work in inhomogeneous uh, medium, you have love waves like guided uh, SH SO. So to illustrate this uh, different type of wave, I show you so semi-infinite with uh, a polarization uh, here. So it's a view of the deplacement with, uh, with the um, uh, deplacement of the surface acoustic wave. So it's really, the, the, the energy is really confined on the free surface of the, of the material, of the quartz. So it's very interesting for, for sense, sensing application. Uh, after we have brushed and Gilayev, it's not very suitable, it's very difficult to use for, for sensing application. And uh, now if you look about plate, we can look about lamb, so it's uh, for very thin uh, substrate. So it's sometimes difficult to, to obtain this. And we use sometimes SH-APM, shear horizontal acoustic plane one. So now, if you want to realize acoustic wave sensor, the idea is to, uh, to, to obtain uh, a perturbation of the wave velocity. So change of wave velocity and attenuation are detected as a result of the device interaction with the environment. It's the, the, the principle of your acoustic sensor. So now, if you want to, uh, to realize a chemical sensor, we can split the system in uh, three blocks. The first block is uh, the receptor. Then it, it should be, for example, uh, um, polymer uh, coating uh, or inorganic or organic coating. Uh, it's possible or biomedical. After we have a transducer, so it's uh, the acoustic, so with a coupling mechanism like mass, viscosity, conductivity, permittivity. And after the, the last block, it's uh, more electronic with signa signal amplification, amplifier, uh, or treatment of the information. So free block, and we have to improve all of them to obtain the best sensitivity, to obtain the best performance in terms of uh, low uh, of limit of detection. So sensor response to perturbation, if you look about uh, the variation of velocity and the attenuation, so we have a change in mass accumulation is the first effect, the most important. The second one, we have a change in viscoelastic uh, constant and in the second order we have change in dielectric constant and conductivity in uh, over perturbation like temperature and pressure. So acoustic wave and chemical detection the first uh, platform uh, uh, used for um, uh, first platform of acoustic wave uh, using uh, acoustic wave are based on mass effect uh, using a uh, uh, bulk acoustic wave. Uh, it's Zawerbe, uh, Zawerbe, who has uh, used uh, these uh, uh, devices. The first 
application of uh, vapor det detection is uh, King, Professor King. So, but this, it's, it, it is really the first application using acoustic, but uh, it's not very um, sensitive. So, after different, uh, different uh, team in the world work on uh, surface acoustic wave, and especially about uh, surface acoustic wave uh, with Raleigh wave, and it permits to demonstrate the high potentiality to, to work for, for uh, to work in um, vapor medium to, to detect uh, small uh, small quantity at uh, ppm level. So bulk acoustic wave to have uh, an idea you, you use it's a very popular uh, component used in uh, electronic. So it's a uh, it's not very complicated, but now if you look for surface acoustic wave, it's quite different. The idea is to use a, a piezoelectric substrate and to put on the free surface of uh, interdigital transducer, IDT, here, and uh, it's in general a metal uh, um, layer, okay, with uh, the interdigital, and you can generate uh, um, by piezoelectric effect uh, acoustic wave, and we can realize uh, a delay line. So the so idea is to, to put on the acoustic path of this uh, delay line to put a sensitive layer. And the sensitive layer, its uh, the objective is to, to catch the target molecule and the, this interaction between the target molecule modify the property, the physical, the, the chemical and physical property of the sensitive layer and induce a perturbation of the phase velocity. So this uh, uh, effect is very interesting in different uh, type of uh, acoustic uh, surface acoustic wave. So we have here a view of the, of the piezoelectric. We have a high mass loading sensitivity because we have a high energy confinement uh, near the free surface. And the ID is to, to, to work uh, especially with this, uh, this, this device about um, a working frequency near 100 megahertz. With this frequency, we can obtain a very good sensitivity. It's a good, a good um, compromise between sensitivity and um, noise, okay? So it's necessary to, because with, at this frequency, for example, about a few uh, 100 megahertz, you can obtain a stability in your system about one hertz per second. So short term, short term uh, stability very high. So it permits to have a low uh, limit uh, detection. Okay. So now, if you want uh, uh, to to improve the sensitivity, we have another type of um, device: a shear horizontal acoustic plate mode. So the difference is uh, about the polarization of the waves. Here, it's uh, only an excitation of the shear horizontal polarized acoustic wave. So it's limited. So if you, if you look about what it is the shape of the displacement, displacement, and so it's uh, interesting because with this, uh, this uh, uh, type of um, propagation, shear, uh, SH, APM, uh, it's very interesting for application in uh, liquid medium because, because there is no radiation of the acoustic energy in the liquid medium. So it's very important because so we haven't got any attenuation of the propagation in liquid compared to the so relay mode due to the uh, the vertical component and the vertical component we have an attenuation of the propagation. So this is very interesting for uh, liquid application, especially for uh, biodetection. So um, it's uh, interesting, but one of the problem, it's the sensitivity. The sensitivity, the mass loading sensitivity with this type is lower compared to the, so, uh, the Raleigh so daily line. So in the different team in the world work in different type like uh, flexural plate wave device, another type, the, it's, uh, it's similar, we, we can see here a view of the system, uh, it's a low frequency, so the sensitivity, the mass loading sensitivity is not very uh, important. Um, we have uh, different uh, 
uh, over a system like uh, I say uh, no lamb, lamb wave too. But the best the best uh, the best uh, system best propagation for for many for for many uh, team in the world is to use love waves. Love waves is um, shear horizontal polarization, so it permits to to work in liquid medium. And the idea is to confine the energy in a thin wave guide. So on the top of the piezoelectric layer, on the, on the top of the piezoelectric uh, substrate, we had a guiding layer. And this guiding layer permits to, 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 uh, to confine the energy of the, the acoustic energy on this guiding layer and permit to improve Really, um, to improve the mass sensitivity, the mass loading sensitivity. So, using this guiding layer, we can control, we can really improve the mass sensitivity of the, your system or your device. So, we can obtain uh, a really, a, mm, sorry, oh. we can obtain a trap, it's really trapping energy, so, and uh, one, uh, one of the best uh, uh, solution for uh, liquid application. So now, if you look about the system, love wave device, so we have uh, the, the uh, interdigital transducer here. So we have uh, IDT is parallel to the X crystallographic axis, who permit to have uh, um, only uh, on only um, shear horizontal, pure, pure shear horizontal polarization. And uh, after we can add on the, we can add on the, on the top of the piezoelectric substrate, the guiding layer. And you can see here the view of the shape of the displacement. So it's only shear horizontal displacement. So it is really compatible with the liquid medium. And we have a, t a view of the of the displacement here. Okay, so now you put on the top of the guiding layer your sensitive layer, and you are uh, a complete platform of your uh, uh, complete uh, platform for of acoustic device. Now, if you compare the different uh, type of the of the acoustic mode, we have bow, so, and if you compare. It's interesting to look about uh, the different value of the sensitivity. Uh, you can see here, so for example, and if you compare <coughs> love, it's really better compared to the so mode and compared to the bow mode. So it's really interesting for application in liquid and especially, I say, especially in liquid medium. So, Acoustic uh, uh, wave. So I, I speak now only about uh, love waves uh, propagation. So it's a view of the multi-layer system. So we have the substrate, the guiding layer, and the sensitive coating. Okay. For each layer, you have the density and the bulk uh, shear velocity, the stiffness. The, uh, and uh, sometimes more information if you are, per, for example, in piezoelectric uh, substrate, we have the piezoelectric constant to be considered. So, to, to solve the problem of the multi-layer system, we have to solve with a numer numerical uh, uh, approach. So, we describe at first material with the different uh, constant, okay? We have to consider the orientation, the crystal crystallographic orientation. Okay, so it's perhaps necessary to to to, to make a tensor rotation. After we describe the the equation, the basic equation, and we can obtain um, the resolution of the system. And you have to consider the boundary condition, and we can uh, after extract. The, the value of the phase velocity. So the phase velocity is directly the, uh, an indication of the wave propagation. So to, 
the idea, for example, is to, uh, to, to modeling uh, the mass loading effect. So it's a view of the system. Here is a substrate. Here in the blue, it's uh, the guiding layer. If you put a sensitive coating, the red one, you can uh, simulate the effect of mass loading effect due to the, to the interaction with the target molecule by a, a first order modelization by a modification of the density. And so if you look about on, uh, this uh, representation, here is uh, uh, phase velocity and uh, here the thickness of your uh, tin oxide, okay? You can see the evolution of the phase velocity and the effect, the variation of the phase velocity due to the sorption of the target molecule. And so it, it, you can evaluate the mass sensitivity, okay? And uh, you can so have a view of the best, best multi-layer system to obtain a high mass loading sensitivity. So here you have the sensitivity, here the crystallographic orientation using the Heller angles and the thickness of the tin oxide uh, lay, uh, guiding layer. And you can see here, for example, the best solution for us is to use an attacut and the best point is here. So if you look, it's about, for the thickness of the tin oxide is about four, four or six micrometer, the thickness of the guiding layer. And uh, it's uh, very good to, 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 to and uh, if you look about the value, it's about uh, near uh, 20. So it's a very good uh, mm, way to, 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 to have a, a very high mass loading sensitivity. So now, if you know exactly the good, we have demonstrated that uh, you have to use quartz, for example, uh, tin oxide, and so, if you want to design, we have to generate acoustic wave. So you use, at first, interdigital transducer, so it's a reciprocal uh, structure, so generation and detection, okay? Each finger pair send out waves, propagation of constructive wave. So we have different type of wave. It generates bulk wave, longitudinal, uh, shear horizontal, and uh, shear vertical, okay? And uh, we have different, uh, so it's a view of the um, electrical, uh, uh, cir equivalent circuit, okay, with a capacitor and so. And here it's uh, uh, the time re response, uh, the response in the frequency, in the, in the time domain. And you can see the, the a view for, for this, uh, uh, if you apply this uh, uh, signal in the input of the delay line, you can observe in the output this this uh, uh, characteristic. So now, wave generation. So we can generate free bulk waves and the Rayleigh wave and perpendicular x-axis shear horizontal wave. So now, look about uh, uh, a typical structure. You can see here the the aperture W. Okay, the wavelength. Okay, so typically you, you use uh, 40, uh, 32 uh, micrometer with uh, 100 pair of, uh, of uh, finger. The distance between the two interdigital transducer is about uh, 6 millimeters. Uh, the aperture beam W is about uh, 3.5 uh, millimeters and the working frequency is near 100 megahertz. So the microfab is not very uh, complicated. It's uh, this type of uh, process with deposition, exposure, development, and etching, okay? It's a view of the different uh, device realized in my lab. So the first, uh, we is uh, the first uh, uh, devices that we have designed uh, uh, now more than 10 years ago, 
And um, here it's a view of the interdigital transducer. And this is a new type, the orange one, is a new type of substrate. We use uh, Langazit. It's, not, it's um, similar to quartz, but it permits to, to, to work in a harsh, harsh environment because it permits to work about uh, uh, at a temperature near uh, six, uh, seven hundred degrees. Okay? So now, for electrical characterization, you use a network analyzer. It permits to extract with the, um, the different um, scattering parameter. Okay? We can measure, uh, you can measure this uh, parameter using uh, uh, a network analyzer. So it's very important to, to know uh, S21 to, uh, to and S11 to characterize uh, your, your system, your device. You use um, like this, so you can see on the network analyzer two types of, uh, of uh, curves. The first one is uh, insertion loss, okay? And the second one is a phase one, okay? You can see here, for example, the, frequency, the working frequency, the resonant frequency of the system. So it's this one, this point, with the minimum, uh, oh, sorry, we, um, Oh, sorry. Um, we can see here the minimum of insertion loss here, and uh, you can uh, observe on the on the network analyzer a linear phase. Linear phase is quite important because um, for application uh, to have a linear phase, uh, it's permit to have um, linear sensitivity. Okay, and so it's uh, very important in terms of performance. So now, if you look about the characterization, you can see here it's a, a characterization in a large spectrum of frequency, start from uh, uh, 300 kilohertz here to uh, uh, more than uh, 400 megahertz. And you can see different type of, uh, of uh, wave generation, but the, more, the main important is the surface acoustic wave here, the Rayleigh right one. So, it's uh, very in interesting because look about this, it's uh, the insertion loss. You can see with the marker one, it's uh, the minimum of insertion. It's about, uh, about um, one, uh, near 100, and, uh, uh, 100 megahertz, see here. And you can see here the phase, okay? So now for application, uh, we have different type of application, gas sensor, uh, VOC, like a volatile organic compound, <coughs> electronic nose, and liquid sensor, and biosensor. And the last, it's uh, a possibility to characterize a different uh, film, like uh, thin film, and complex fluid. Now, experimental device. We have different experimental device. Here is a view of uh, a platform. Uh, this, uh, it's one of the first platforms we have designed in my lab. We can see here a ceramic plate with uh, the possibility to, to bond. It's difficult to see the Y bonding the, of the gold uh, Y to connect um, the metal uh, to, the, to the ceramic here. Okay, but uh, it's the first uh, system we have uh, built uh, in uh, 10 years ago now. So now, if you look about the system, normally we use an oscillator configuration. You can see he, here the low wave delay line, and after we use an amplifier with a variable attenuator to realize an oscillator configuration. It permits to, to transform the perturbation, the variation of the velocity, we can obtain in uh, using this, uh, this um, I try to find, to use this uh, di directional coupler to obtain a frequency variation. So using uh, a counter, a frequency counter, you can measure the variation of the frequency of the oscillator. And the frequency of the oscillator, the variation of the frequency, it is a good, uh, it is an image 
of the interaction between the target compound, target molecule. Okay, so to realize the condition uh, of the oscillation, we have two two conditions: the insertion loss and the phase. Okay, so it's uh, we have to uh, design a specific uh, electronic uh, system. So it's a view of the SMT uh, PCB, okay, with the different amplifier, anti attenuator, and so. We have it says a double uh, double system, okay. We have the possibility to to uh, to have two uh, two delay line on the system. And now, for us, is to to use this acoustic platform to uh, realize, for example, detection. So at first, we use classical coating is polymer. So we can, for example, if you want to to design to develop a specific. Uh, uh, system to detect uh, gas compound, we use polymeric. So we have different uh, material with different chemical selectivity. So for for this, uh, we use a different uh, uh, mm, polymer. Yeah, uh, it depends uh, really the property of polymer strongly depends uh, of their structure and the possibility to to have a high uh, selectivity. So sensitive coating, um, it's uh, very, um, very important in terms of selectivity and sensitivity too. So um, to, to quantify exactly, to, to, to make a good choice about your uh, sensitive coating, it's necessary to use different techniques like, for example, partition coefficient to to have uh, to, to measure exactly the 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 efficiency to to catch the target molecule. So we use uh, the normally the linear solvation uh, energy relationship. Um, it's uh, the idea is to 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 have uh, uh, the partition coefficient k who represents uh, the 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 ratio between the the concentration in vapor in, on, on the sensitive coating. And the ID is to, if you want a high, a high specificity, a high selectivity, it's necessary to have a high K value. Okay? So, for example, we, uh, we use, so it's uh, um, this, uh, uh, this um, expression give uh, the, the, um, a view of the um, of the k of the partition coefficient. It describes the different interaction between the solute and the and the solvent, the, the polymer solvent. So it permits to to have a good uh, uh, a good extraction of the value of the affinity of the sense of the polymer with the different uh, uh, type of uh, vapor. So you represent the different interaction between uh, polymer and vapor. So it can be represented by this uh, 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 constant, okay, for polymer and for the vapor, okay. And after, for example, if you want to have a very good uh, affinity uh, and high selectivity too. Uh, we have demonstrated, for example, for different applications like uh, for detection of uh, organophosphorus, uh, organophosphorus compound, we use uh, usually a polysiloxane uh, polymer. So we use this because it's very, uh, very high, uh, with a high thermal uh, stability, a low Tg, uh, chemical inertia, and a possible functionalization. So, especially for uh, the functionalization, it's possible to, gr to gr graft a fluoride group, and fluoride group permit to have a high affinity to the organophosphorus compound. So now, if you look of, of this, for example, it's a result of different study we have made in collaboration with uh, Thales Group. Uh, we have a synthesis uh, different uh, polymeric form here. Uh, and uh, here it's a uh, different value of the, of the different constant. And if you look about the value of log de K with different vapor, 
look at this. For example, the PLG, PLG is a, a typical uh, polysiloxane form, and different uh, gas vapor like uh, toluene, uh, uh, water, um, and uh, DMMP. DMMP it's uh, it's like uh, it's a organic uh, phosphorus compound. It's a dimethyl methyl phosphonate, and he has a very high uh, K value. So it's very interesting for detect. So it demonstrates the high ability of the PLG to detect organic organophosphorus compound. So now to to uh, to realize this, uh, um, we we spray. Oh, sorry, we spray the polymer using this uh, system. It's a, a spray a spray uh, coater. So you can see you see here the spray valve and here the sensor. Um, we can observe. Oh, sorry. So we can observe um, different uh, results uh, of the detection of organophosphorus gases, like um, using uh, the PLG uh, sensitive coating, and uh, with different uh, gases. So at first, uh, I show you uh, different uh, detection using DMMP, and after GB. So it's a very uh, uh, toxic gas. Uh, so look at this. So we can see the detection of the DMMP at a very low level. Look here, it's uh, about uh, it's a sub, sub ppm level. Okay, and we can see really the good uh, vari frequency variation because it's about uh, 10 kilohertz. So it's quite impor important compared to the stability of the oscillator. The stability of the oscillator is just one hertz per second. So it's very good. So now if you look about GB, GB, don't sarin, uh, you can see here it's, a, it's a very, the shape of the, of the response. So we can observe a different uh, concentration from 0.5 ppm to 12 ppm. And the, the frequency shift is quite important. If, for example, for 10 ppm, 12 uh, ppm, it's about uh, 10 kilohertz, so it's quite, quite good. Now, if you look about, so I finish with uh, uh, gas uh, detection. Uh, I show you now uh, complex fluid characterization. So, for complex fluid characterization, is to, uh, to, to the idea is to, to combine the acoustic platform using a uh, uh, microfluidic system, a mi microfluidic chip. So you put directly on the top of the free surface of the acoustic platform, you put a uh, microfluidic chip here. You can see the, the architecture of the system. So we can design a micro channel. So it's a view of a, a very uh, simple system, okay, very um, and the idea of this system, it's only to measure different parameters like uh, uh, the, the, the viscosity of different uh, solutions. So it's a view of the, of the device. You can see the, the microfluidic ship with the different inlet and outlet, okay? A view of the system, what you can use. And it, here, it's a result of the characterization of this uh, of this uh, liquid, and we can extract uh, the value of G prime and G prime, uh, G prime, G prime, uh, prime. Okay, and so it's a very good. Um, it's um, you can so obtain a rheological um, uh, behavior of your uh, uh, liquid, and so it's. Uh, Interesting. For example, we have the demonstrate the capabilities to 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 measure the the, the properties, the mechanical properties, the elastic, viscoelastic property of the polydimethyl methyl siloxane. Okay. So now, uh, last uh, ap uh, application. It's about uh, biosensing and AV metals. So the idea is to uh, 
to demonstrate the, the, the potentiality to, to, re to realize a real-time uh, immunodetection. So we have uh, the acoustic uh, substrate, okay, the, uh, the acoustic um, platform. At first, we uh, put a linker, and after we had uh, the antibody, okay? And after, for example, it's possible to detect like a uh, bacteriophage directly on your uh, surface. Uh, so there is an interaction. And so the presence of the uh, bacteriophage, bacteriophage induces a variation on the wave propagation. Okay? So now we have another type of application for uh, uh, microorganism detection for selfish quality and Escherichia coli. So it's different. One is for seafood uh, quality, and the second one is the quality of the sea coast because uh, many, in many cities in the southwest of France, the problem is the quality of water. And you, uh, if you want to, 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 to swim, okay, it's necessary to know exactly if it's good for you. So many, many cities uh, want to, to, to control, to measure the quality of water. So Escherichia coli is one of the main parameters. To, to, okay. So uh, the idea is to develop a, a sensor using this technique. So it's a, the combination of acoustic and uh, microfluidic uh, PDMS cell. So we use uh, this. So it's a view of the, of the new system uh, we have designed uh, uh, two years ago. So we can see uh, directly the, um, the heater here. You can put uh, here a system. And we have here the, a view of the resistor for the heater. OK. And after, you can put directly on the top your uh, acoustic device after the PDMS uh, ship with um, a typical ar architecture and after the electrical connection. So it's a view of the complete system. You can see here on the photo, here the PDMS uh, cell, okay? And here the different connection with the ACMA uh, connector to obtain um, Electri electrical connection to the, for example, network analyzer or to the oscillator configuration. So, a view of the complete uh, uh, system to demonstrate really the high potentiality of this uh, system. So, immunodetection of uh, Escherichia coli. Uh, here, you can see on this curve different. Uh, uh, variation, frequency variation. At first, we have the biofunctionalization. After, it's uh, the grafting of the antibody. Okay. Uh, we can see the saturating agent. So after grafting, it's necessary to, to put saturating agent uh, on, the, on your system. And after, we can... Uh, um, you can uh, detect uh, Escherichia coli. So we, we can see the interaction. And so, show, uh, so you can see here the frequency variation due, due to, to Escherichia coli. So it's uh, very interesting to, uh, it's, uh, to have the possibility to detect very rapidly because it's uh, with um, less than uh, half an hour. Typically, it's 10 minutes. We can detect, uh, we can detect uh, Escherichia coli. Now, uh, we, have a, we have another application using heavy metals. Yeah? So uh, we use a polyelectrolytic uh, layer by layer deposit. So we use this type of uh, polyelectrolyte. OK, it's a view of the, of the uh, architecture so uh, it's uh, uh, we have put the different uh, layer of electrolyte and here on the top of the last one we we um, we have uh, exactly Escherichia coli so it's a biomolecule but the highly it's uh, if you put now heavy metals on the on this uh, system there is, there is a perturbation of Escherichia coli and induce a perturbation of acoustic wave. And so we can 
look on this, uh, look on this uh, uh, frequency variation, you can see the different effect of the polyelectrolyte, and the last one here is the effect of Ericiaculi. Okay, so it's very interesting because we have a perturbation of the the, the effect, but it's not mass loading. It's a viscoelastic property, a modification of the viscoelastic property, and uh, due to the bacterial metabolism. So it's an interesting way to to detect heavy metals. It's not a direct method because we, it's necessary to to add on the top of the electrolyte, uh, polyelectrolyte, Escherichia but it's a uh, interesting way to detect the, uh, the presence of heavy metals. So, um, another, just a few, few words about uh, the interest of, of uh, using uh, tin oxide uh, for, with uh, meso mesoporous uh, form is to, um, to, to improve the sensitivity of the, of the device, okay? So we can see here the results. Uh, so with, with and without, okay, here you can see the, the, the vari frequency variation is, is really better when you use, uh, when you use, oh, sorry. When you use a micro uh, mesoporous uh, layer. So to conclude uh, about uh, acoustic sensor, different uh, various applications, like gas sensor, electronic nose, liquid sensor, biosensor, and thin film characterization. So we, uh, we have uh, the possibility to, to have a good uh, knowledge about uh, wave propagation in a multi-layer structure. Combination with a sensitive film like a polymeric, meso and nano structured material and biomaterials. Uh, combination with micro uh, microfluidic device, uh, prototyping of ultra sensitive platform for early detection or dynamic monitoring, real time wave environment interaction phenomena, and uh, one of the main uh, main uh, interests it's about uh, modelization, modelization of interaction mechanism like a wave gas, a wave fluid, a wave solid. Influence of target compound like bacteria, uh, toxin, and so, and um, the effect of temperature uh, too. So, in prospect, uh, at the present time, we have a development of innovative archi architecture integrating microsensor and digital microfluidic in polymer technology for for medical application, uh, molecularly uh, imprinted polymer sensor MIP. Uh, for rapid detection of modified nucleoside for non-invasive monitoring of cancer therapy on oncology. Uh, Developing a new passive cell-based biosensor for the detection of AV metals and the design of innovative platform integrating new sensitive material. So it's uh, really the, the prospect of our team. And in conclusion, uh, the three, 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 three uh, uh, keywords uh, about um, real-time detection and uh, versatile and portable multi-sensor platform. And uh, you can see here uh, there is a really a multidisciplinary uh, research work. So it's necessary to have a, a collaboration with the microelectronic, chemistry, biology, microfluidic, mechanical engineering, so it's really uh, a complete job uh, for this uh, uh, possibility to design uh, a sensor. So to illustrate uh, this uh, point of view, uh, we have a, a sensor, a microsystem with different collaboration. So uh, to finish, thank you for your attention. Thank you.
biomimetic films that could mimic kind of living cells or living cell compounds or protein films where we could look at the conformations or interaction with the environment? Is this something you're working on? Or? Not yet, but I think it's a good, uh, perhaps a good opportunity, yes, to, to, to have a the idea of to, to, to have the possibility to, uh, to, um, to have um, a view of the modification of the conformation of the protein, for example, I think it's uh, possible using acoustic wave. Because I'm thinking to two uh, fields of research. One is actually being able to follow uh, by maybe following the mechanical properties uh, change in protein conformations based on some uh, environment uh, total changes, and the other one, the other one is a topic that deals with, uh, let's say, nanotoxicology studies, where you can see how will be locally the interaction between living cells and some materials. So either putting some living cells on the film or putting materials and see how some cells of bacteria can interact with it. Yes. Um, <coughs> the, the, I think there is two approach. The, the one is direct one, you say, in, uh, in, uh, direct interaction between the, 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 the biomolecule, okay? It's uh, the first, it's more, it's a classical, um, view, okay? After you propose to, to, to have uh, another... Yeah, so let's say uh, growing, I don't know, I'm not an expert, but so let's say growing a, a film of, uh, of, mono, of bacteria yeah. onto the transducers and see how this film can interact when you have nanoparticles, strains, what about the nutrition? Yeah, but it's the idea, for example, it's the, it's the idea of heavy metals. Okay, the detection of heavy metals. We have an inter the interaction. We have we modify the metabolism of the of the of, of the Escher uh, uh, molecule. Okay, due to the due to the presence of the heavy metals. Okay, but the battery is already on your transducer. Yeah. Okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Not directly on the transducer. There is a. Different yeah, layer because it is necessary to have functionalization. We have the polyelectrolyte and so on. Okay, but it's not a direct uh, detection of heavy metals. Okay. Right. Uh, so for the cadmium detection, right? Your, your heavy metal detection. Uh, I, sorry. The the cadmium, the heavy metal detection. The heavy metal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, so what's the specificity? Like you know, if you use mercury. Um, here, there is no specificity. Yeah. Right. Okay, it's a. So you just detect its response, right? If you yeah, yeah, similar yeah, response. yeah. In one of the problem with polyelectrolyte, and and uh, there is no specificity. Okay? okay, but for this application, it's sufficient. Okay, it's really it depends on the application. So um, here it's a um, it's a uh, contract with an industrial industrial company, mm -hmm. and he say uh, it's not necessary to have a, a specificity. You just want to know if there is heavy metals or no heavy metals. It doesn't okay. matter what type of heavy metal. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes? When you talk about a mass change, yeah. an analyte will bind to the surface. Yeah. Would one expect then if you strip down the recognition size to the analyte that you would increase sensitivity? So you have a very large analyte quite large, if you could trap the essence of the recognition to a smaller molecule and replace the antibody with that, would the percentage of mass change as it bound improve a, the sensitivity on the system? It's a good question. <laughs> it's, it's complicated because um, one of the problem is um, the wave, uh, wave depth of penetration, okay? It depends on the frequency. It depends on the, on the property of your liquid medium, the, visco the viscosity of your medium. So you can sometimes improve the sensitivity 
only using, for example, a higher viscosity in your medium, liquid medium. Be because it's, it's compli it, it is really complicated, uh, especially when you, you're using, uh, for example, uh, biomolecule. Because, for example, antibody, when you graft antibody on your surface of your uh, platform, it's not this. Sometimes it's more complicated. And so it's really difficult to have a, uh, the good um, chemistry, the good functionalization to obtain a very uh, reproducible technique about your grafting, about your placement. So it's really, really difficult. And so we have, I think it's necessary to, to have more work on this because it's not very well known. And especially, one of the problems, for example, in this uh, type of uh, platform, we use for the guiding layer uh, silicon oxide. And for doing the guiding layer, you use PUCVD technique. If you look about the surface, the roughness of the surface, it's not very good. Because the guiding layer is very thick. It's about 4 micrometers. 4 micrometers, it's a... It's not a thin film, okay? okay? And if you look, using IFM technique, for example, you say, oh, it's not very good. It's not very good for grafting. It's so we have to modify the surface of the guiding layer with a linker to improve the quality of the grafting. So. For example, uh, we speak uh, with Eric about the possibility to, to design a new guiding layer to have the possibility to improve, really, the propagation, to improve the sensitivity, the mass loading sensitivity, or on a very, uh, like a viscosity or so, okay? But the highly, okay. Uh, uh, might be used, for example, uh, using cantilevers and I, I think elements. compared to cantilever is better, okay? Um, compare another technique, it's an uh, optical one, es especially for liquid medium, is uh, surface plasma resonance, SPF. Yeah, yeah. Very good one, okay? Yeah, uh, yeah, and I think there is a challenge. It, dep it depends on the application. And sometimes it should be better to use SPR, okay? and um, acoustic. Cantilever, at f during uh, many times we think it's better because it's possible. But if you look about uh, the surface area to, 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 to realize your sensitive coating is very small and sometimes it's not sufficient to obtain det uh, detection with uh, high sensitivity. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, uh, just, one, yeah, just a short question. What is the minimum mass variation that you manage to detect? Less than uh, picogram. Yeah. Typical, you say nanogram is not a problem. It's not a challenge. Okay. You say, but classical few picograms. No, it's a, it's 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 possible using log wave, for example. Okay. Okay, I uh, hope you'll join me in thanking Dr. Levy Hepp for